Hey then, welcome to the show, this special year end. We are ending 2018, announcing 2019. And yes, at the end of this special, I have an announcement. Yes, so, so, the, so we're going to take a look back at 2018 and then Vikram will make an announcement for the future of 2019. And believe me, it's a very good one. So, okay, we are going to take a look at the technologies and the products that we think have made the biggest impact. And we are being joined by a very special group. Pika Roy, Kishore Bhargav, and Mr. Phone all sitting together here and telling us exactly what they think is, is going to happen. Well, yeah, absolutely. You know, when you look back at 2018, every time we try and think, was this a great year for technology? Was it not? So I think maybe the first thing that we'll try and get from everybody is, what are your thoughts on good, great, the greatest? So what do you think? What was the best? Was this a great year for you? I think it was a great year, and not just for gadgets, but the use of those gadgets. 400 million people used 4G and Wi-Fi, high-speed Wi-Fi. That is one. Digital payments was another thing that really exploded because suddenly people started using things beyond WhatsApp in this country. So I think in terms of usage of a lot of this tech, powered by connectivity, it was a great year. Otherwise, you have the usual mix of new phones, better camera, worse battery life. Was tech that. gimmicky this year or were there real innovations? I don't see a lot of tremendous innovations at the front end. At the back, there was a lot of AI which powered stuff very quietly. You didn't really notice those things, whether it's elevators, learning patterns of what people are doing or search getting better. Uh, your uh, you know ads following you all over the place if you even <laughs> thought of you just think of some potato fries and you know immediately you'll find ads for those so stuff like that this year was actually really a great year as far as technology was concerned but yes one of the big disappointments of this year was blockchain I mean we saw blockchain being limited only to cryptocurrency so I think blockchain was uh, a bit of a disappointment However, I think in 2019, blockchain is going to be one of the big things that happens that, because yes. what's happened is it got restricted to cryptocurrency. The power of blockchain has not been used in other places. And I'm really looking forward to stuff like, you know, being used in healthcare. What did you think of the year for technology? Uh, I'll, I'll keep it basic. I, what I think about 2019, at least as far as smartphones are concerned, is that everybody tried to make a, a design transition. Uh, what that meant was, uh, you know, everybody was trying to eliminate the notch. Mm -hmm. While the notch started off, uh, you know, from the, on the front, the display has a notch which cuts off. Uh, what happened is that people started making slide out phones, right? Uh, phones that pop out, slide out, and there were motorized cameras that popped out as well. That was a definitely an interesting trend. I really want to know what happens in 2019. Like, are we going to completely see the notch getting eliminated and, you know, a complete screen display, especially because we're consuming a lot of content now, that makes a lot of difference for sure. Right, can we now jump to all of you and try and get your sense of the most interesting tech headline of 2018? What would be your pick? Big cybersecurity breaches, Cambridge Analytica, Facebook, you know, starting from there to lots of credit cards, lots of hacks. And on the tech side, nothing spectacular. Special mention maybe for the Pixel 3 and the way it uses software for photography. Computational photography out. became such Actually, a the leak. Pixel 3 leak, at least uh, the leaks that had, uh, you know, started off before the phone launched, was a massive thing this year because everybody got on that train and everybody was speculating if that is going to be the actual phone. There, was, there, there were Russians selling the phone in the black market, people buying it, reviewing it early as well. Google had absolutely no control over the leaks whatsoever. And that was very interesting for me because in the end, when the phone launched, it was the same thing that happened in the leaks. But Most yeah. interesting headline of 2018. So, you know, I think um, at the beginning of the year, I actually wrote a small blog post, uh, which was titled A Leak Year. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and I think that's actually come true. Uh, you know, we've seen from hardware, uh, you know, with CPUs, with the Spectre and, you know, all kinds of problems this year as far as cybersecurity is concerned. Yeah. And, and, I, and also manufactured leaks. Now, Google most definitely. probably wasn't done by the brand, probably. but the others are all manufactured leaks, which are actually is a, a bigger marketing campaign now is done by brands as to how to leak and create buzz. And it actually is a global phenomenon. Now. So I think you got it right, the leak here in more ways than one. Okay, what's your idea of the headline? So, so I think uh, it is 
the start of the end of Facebook in every which way. This year, dom it, it became, I think, a poster boy for everything wrong in social media. People that loved it today say, now I understand the problem of social media. People going off Facebook and then realizing it's not Facebook just Facebook. in general or WhatsApp Facebook or Instagram? Facebook poster boy for the fact that social media was ruining your life, was taking away precious minutes of your life. And then all the leaks and the problems and the fact that a company as strong as Facebook, with the kind of money that they have, the PR machinery that they have, mm -hmm. cannot control this debacle anymore. There are bigger problems in each platform actually, and all of them are battling their own problems. Yeah. You're talking about WhatsApp battling fake news problem, and then there's Instagram battling influencer problem. So it just all adds up for Facebook this year. So my contender, and to some extent, I think I would also agree with them. I think the entire question, the set of headlines we've had around privacy and data and now surveillance, look at the way we ended the year with the question of surveillance really popping up. To what extent can the government sit and monitor everything that you're doing? So that would, be, that would be my contender. Here's a quick look what the team put together as some of the headlines of the year. 2018 has been a busy year in the world of tech. From security breaches to next level display screens, the year gone by had it all. Time to go down the lane and look at the big headlines that made us gasp, marvel and simply go OMG. Whatever could possibly go wrong with Facebook went wrong this year. In the Cambridge Analytica scandal, it was found out that personal data of close to 87 million users was compromised and used to influence the 2016 US presidential elections. This led to Facebook stocks plummeting and also brought CEO Mark Zuckerberg to appear in front of the Congress and the EU. In further developing artificial intelligence and bringing it closer to our daily life, Google announced the duplex which allows users to chat with a bot in the most human-like expressions. So happening out here? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. An intense debate split the world in two halves. An audio illusion went viral and users could hear either of the two words, Laurel or Yanni. Which camp do you belong to? Laurel, Laurel, Laurel. The flexible phone is finally a reality. Samsung announced its foldable smartphone with a 4.6-inch screen. When unfolded, it will extend up to 7.4-inch tablet. This is likely to be available in 2019. Companies initiated a bit of digital detox this year. Facebook, Apple, Google added features to monitor the time you spend on the phone to avoid smartphone and social media addiction. Elon Musk ended the year on a swift note with the launch of his boring company's 1.8-kilometer underground tunnel near Los Angeles as a solution to growing traffic. Didn't they say there's light at the end of the tunnel? Okay, let's now move to some of the gadgets of the year or the technologies that really interested us. The phone that really caught your eye in 2018. <laughs> the phone that really caught my eye was the one that launched the last <laughs> this year is the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. I mean, what a stunner. I mean, I, I we, we all just saw that phone blow up like anything because primarily because they made a complete flagship smartphone that could take on the likes of something like the Galaxy Note 9 and the Pixel 3 as well. All right, phone of the so year. I would say this year's phone uh, would actually be the Poco F1. Um, it's, uh, you know, in terms of innovation, in terms of uh, price point, uh, they've put everything together and they've still kept the price low. Um, the, so, the so do you think, Kishore, the innovation was the price? Because eventually it's no, a processor I think, and RAM game. Right, but see, they've got the best processor in that, they've got good RAM in that. You know, in terms of tech, I'm really still impressed by the Pixel 3 and the way it handles ultra low light photography, largely through computation and software. But I think the phone that made the maximum impact probably was the OnePlus 6 slash T. Right. Uh, you know, it really significantly because they spent so changed much the market. Money on their brand ambassadors or because of the phone? Uh, I think, well, it was a, probably a price play. So you could say they took flagship level stuff and delivered it at a price point, which was, of but course, you know, they've been increasing people, their prices. That's one lot, thing. Yeah, exactly. A lot they of have. people are supremely disappointed with the OnePlus because of the increase in price. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they said we'll never spend money other than only on R&D, now they spend more on, you know, brand ambassadors that are the, always the best in each country. But I think there were some interesting, I think there were some interesting clues to the way the future is headed. 
something which you have been talking about for a couple of years and you keep on making fun of you. Yeah. We've been talking about four technology ones. innovations that are coming. Four ones. We will talk foldable about phones, yeah. foldable phones. I made we the saw prediction the first in 2011. One. Foldable phones, yeah, he's been saying for 10 years. Kabhi na kabhi aayega, aara hai finally. Foldable phones may finally be here. Bol do phone. Bol. Bol. Yeah, bol. Achha, First and foremost, I think I'll, I'm going to do a bit of a shocker. For me, the hidden gem of the year was iPhone an XR. iPhone XR. Yes. Undiscovered, super hidden gem, absolutely the same as the XS Max. Just a little bit on the screen, and if you, I've done blind tests with people, they you know, can't tell the OLED versus the LCD. Yeah, but but and, but and the, the there's a thing, but to it. There's what? a but to it. The but is to it, it big is, but? I, yeah, it's a fairly big but. The the big but to that is that I, if you had thought about iPhone, about Apple coming out, iPhone XR, just move the pricing down a little bit. And here's a quick look at all the phones that the team found really interesting in 2018. Reverse charging. Not one, not two, not three. Four cameras. An eSIM for all your globe trotting needs. Night photography like never before. From big notches to bezel-less displays. Smartphones in the year 2018 pulled out all stops to woo customers and we're lauding them for their efforts. So here is our list of the best of the best. The iPhone XR impressed us more than Apple's other flagship launches, the XS Max and the XS this year. Though a cheaper iPhone than the other two, it still comes with a mighty A12 Bionic chipset, a premium design and a great battery for Rs 76,900 for 64 GB. And if you still want the full HD screens and better cameras, the XS and the XS Max also impressed us with eSIM capabilities and will currently cost you around Rs 95,000 and Rs 1,9499 for 64 GB respectively. The Huawei Mate 20 Pro proved itself to be the flagship of the year for many reasons. With great design, powerhouse cameras and a reverse charging feature, this phone comes for Rs 69,990 for 6GB RAM. Samsung came out with the Galaxy Note 9 with a whopping 1TB of storage, if you ever need that much of course, and a beautiful screen. But the real showstopper here is a camera remote-enabled Bluetooth S Pen. Prices on the higher side and the Note 9 can be yours now for Rs 63,000 for 6GB RAM. Samsung even grabbed headlines with a quad camera phone, the A9. Priced at 36,990 rupees for 6GB RAM, some may call the camera an overkill, we call it innovation. Speaking of great cameras, one phone redefined night photography this year and that was the new Google Pixel 3. Google's new flagships, the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL came with flagship prices too. The Pixel 3 for 71,000 rupees and the Pixel 3 XL for 83,000 rupees for 64 GB. This brand became synonymous with great features at an affordable price and with the OnePlus 60, the company notched things up a bit, including the price. You get a 6.41 inch AMOLED display with a notch and an increased battery life than the OnePlus 6. This phone can be yours for 37,999 rupees for 6 GB RAM. Nokia is back with a vengeance and with the Nokia 8.1, the company is fighting for the number one spot. The Nokia 8.1 is a premium looking phone priced aggressively at 26,999 rupees for 4 GB RAM. Coming down the price ladder, the budget segment witnessed some game changing handsets and one phone stood out for us. The Poco F1 launched by Xiaomi sub-brand impressed us a lot, especially with its premium armoured edition which comes with a Kevlar back panel. The Poco F1 is priced at 20,999 rupees for 6GB RAM. The Realme 2 Pro became a force to reckon with in the sub-15K segment with its head-turning design, a great camera and its price. Rupees 13,990 for 4GB RAM. Of course, this list may not be comprehensive since this year witnessed some great launches. The Asus Zenfones were famous for their massive batteries priced under 10,000 rupees. And we finally got our hands on the first gaming phone this year. The Asus ROG, which is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 chipset, comes with Corning Gorilla Glass 6, is flash proof and boasts of a massive 4000 mAh battery. There are also some interesting accessories like the Twin View Dock and GameWise controller. It is priced at 69,999 rupees. The Vivo Nex also got plenty of oohs and ahs from audience for its innovative pop-up camera hidden behind the display. The phone is now available for a little over 42,000 rupees online for 128 GB.
And let's not forget Oppo's recently launched R17 Pro, which took on the big wigs in the camera section, with its low photography prowess and is priced at Rs 45,990. It seems like 2018 was an action-packed year for phone makers. But something tells us more exciting stuff awaits in 2019. Gentlemen, gentlemen, can I now very quickly segue you on to any one, other product? Any other product that you the think product really, that you love? The this product that you really found unbelievable. Uh, the Amazon Echo. I think smart speakers through the Echo made a huge impact, and people actually have started using smart bulbs and smart devices. And you know they have Echoes in multiple rooms. Uh, the Google Home to a lesser extent, but I really think the Echo uh, has a shot. I think, I think Amazon with, with, with the entire family and what Alexa is already capable of, what Alexa is going to do, very clearly got a winner. And I think right now it's almost, it's almost scary as to how far ahead Amazon is of the others when it comes to some of these features. And it's not just the portfolio of Amazon Echo products. It's the number of products it now talks to. Yeah. Every security camera, Become anything, the, the, the skills, stone for yeah. smart homes. skills, the, there's, I mean, look at the portfolio of skills they have. Literally, there's nothing that doesn't work with an Alexa. This is probably the only product we all agree that <laughs> was really, really good. Yeah. Since, since, since the echoes so, have gone. Uh, any, any camera? That didn't right, see? so in, in terms of camera, I was really, really impressed with the Nikon uh, Z7. Uh, mirrorless, their first mirrorless attempt. Um, They've done a very good job with it. Uh, the Z, uh, Z6 and the Z7. I got the Z7 for a for a couple of weeks. Fantastic camera. Okay. Uh, I'm coming back to audio again, but this time it's not voice assisted. Uh, Sony just uh, you yeah, know took it out of the park with the WH1000 XM3s. Uh, it is an iteration to the previous generation noise cancelling headphone that they had, but man, even those buyers need to move to this one because the sound quality has improved drastically. They've made a slight change to the design, so it sits on the head very nicely. You can sit with it for a long duration of time in flights. It is the perfect noise cancelling headphone, so much so that I think it's better than the Bose. You know, one, of the, one of the things I'll add to that, uh, this year has actually also seen a lot of noise cancelling earbuds and Correct. you know other right. wireless headphones coming out. So it's it's another category I think that you know we we were ignoring for a the long small, time. The small, the small wireless, truly wireless yeah, ones, yeah, truly wireless. Like you are here. And airport alternatives look a lot better than the airport. You're talking about 2018 and you're having this conversation in North India. Frankly, <laughs> if you had any money, you wanted to buy a gadget, a device. There is only one device you should be buying in Northern India, and you know what that is. That's all we should be discussing: <laughs> phones, right? Headphones. What about your lungs? That's <laughs> air purifiers. That's the one product that you should be looking at. Should you buy a Sharp? Should you buy a Philips? Should you buy 10 air purifiers for a small room this size? Should you buy a plant size? with an air purifier as Vikram really loves? Yeah, but oh my. Th 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 that's not good enough to <laughs> really tackle Delhi's airs. And by the way, what's really becoming scary is that now you're seeing bright sunny days with blue skies and you look at the air pollution level and it's 400 AQI. Yeah. That is what's really scary. So, hey, Got any money? You need to buy a device. Let's take a look at everything else in 2018 that really stood out. 2018 saw a range of devices across all price points, sizes and utility. Now time to find out which were the trend setting devices. So mirror mirror on the wall, which is the smartest gadget of them all? Alexa, Hey Google became household names as smart speakers became the trend this year with the introduction of Google Home and the new-gen Amazon Echo devices. The speakers can be further connected to other smart devices like lights, televisions and more for connectivity. With gesture controls, the Sony XM3 is one of the finest noise cancellation headphones. Bose and Sennheiser 2 came up with their headphones for the audiophiles this year. With growing air pollution, air purifiers have been the need of the hour. Several companies launched their purifiers with effective filters and some even with smartness built in. For instance, the Mi Air Purifier can be controlled with your phone app, while the Dyson gives details on its display screen. Apple fans had a lot to look forward to this year. The iPad Pro with the reverse charging feature. After a 10-year wait, the MacBook Air. New iPhones. And of course, the new Apple Watch that can record ECG. There were new devices with some new features. Building the smart home system, smart refrigerators too seem to become popular. 
the Samsung family hub with its built-in cameras and sensor and an interactive display touchscreen was a hit, though it is priced very high. We're discussing 2018. Of course, this brilliant panel, Vikram and me, are going through what was really the best of 2018. But lots of our other tech friends, journalists and bloggers, let's take a look at what they think. 2018, the best of a tech that really worked and what didn't work for them at all. We saw the rise and fall of the notch and of course uh, the moving away of the headphones jack from a lot of smartphones. But I think the biggest deal which went slightly uh, unnoticed was how budget phone cameras, especially in the 10, 15, 20,000 rupee price point, have improved so drastically, especially with low light photography. I think smart assistants uh, and the whole uh, aspect around uh, artificial intel intelligence, AI, uh, was one of the key highlights. I think it was just playing around with the notches. Who can make better notches? That's what we saw in 2018. I think more uh, or less notches in the display and now in display fingerprint sensors towards the end of 2018. Uh, I think there were two major trends that we started to see. One is that software has become uh, more pared down. There's no more heavy user interface skins, which is definitely beneficial for the users. Um, and we're also seeing a shift towards full screen design. So you're starting to see notches of different shapes and sizes. I think in 2019 as well, this is what is going to continue till eventually we figure out the technology to completely hide away the camera uh, from the front of the device. I think we're going to have to end it there on this special episode, but do join us again next week where there will be an interesting announcement and then after that, we are also going to be looking at all the technologies that are coming up in 2019. Next week on the show, we predict the tech trends for 2019. And what's Vikram's big announcement? Find out on the Gadget360 show next week. Thank you.